I'm absolutely delighted to welcome to the First Time Facilitator podcast, Sarah Coordinar. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Amazing to be here. Thanks so much, Leanne. Now, what's a bit of a bummer is that, Sarah, you moved to a town called Broome, Western Australia, shortly after I left. It was one of the best towns I've ever lived in. Can you please tell our listeners what brought you there, what you do now, and how you discovered the world, the world of online courses and um, online training? Amazing. It's it's quite interesting now, Leanne. Um, I've got over 32,000 students in 168 countries currently studying my online courses. And a lot of people say to me, you know, gosh, you must have this massive setup. You know, you must have all these things, this big marketing team. I actually work from my spare bedroom. Um, you, anyone watching the video recording of this at the moment, you'll see a little whiteboard behind me that my little darling four-year-old is scribbled all over. And I do that from the spare bedroom in a house in tiny little outback town in Australia. And it is testament, isn't it, that it doesn't matter where we are today, as long as we have an internet connection and some kind of device that can connect to it, it doesn't even have to be a computer. It is absolutely incredible how many people's lives that we can impact. So before I came up here, I've been up in Broome now for uh, just coming up to my four years. So uh, I'm having to move soon because the thing that brought me here was my police officer husband. So we were down in Perth for eight years and uh, husband's a police officer and in the Western Australian police you actually have to do at some point in your career it's it's up to you when you choose that um, you have to do a minimum of two years country remote or regional service so uh, we just sort of threw our hands up in the air we were a bit cold I think was I think it was the Perth winter at the time we made the decision and I was freezing like moved to Australia from the UK because I cannot handle being cold and I didn't realize that Perth got pretty damn cold so I went all right I don't mind where we go as long as it's north um so we got broom couldn't believe it I mean could not believe our luck that we ended up here um, but we only get four years to live here so actually we're going even more remote by the end of this year so by sort of December January and um, we're actually going to be in Kununurra which for those oh, I love who know, yeah, those of you who don't know where that is um it's basically nowhere and it's great it's right up uh, near the ter- uh, the northern territory border um so very hot um yes crocodiles and I can't wait because I've definitely got accustomed to not wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's definitely really weird for me moving back to Brisbane and thinking, oh, wow, I've actually got to dress up a bit and, and you know, all that, just the, it, yeah, it took me about a year to transition back into city life. Kununurra is amazing. They've got a beautiful infinity pool out at Lake Argyle. Now, Sarah, How did you, so what were you doing up in Broome then? I worked for the TAFE in Broome. Yeah, for for six or seven years. And I think I actually tell a lot of people because I get asked a lot like how I built my career. Mm -hmm. And I would say living in regional Australia is probably the best way because I was working in marketing there. There was no big marketing team. So I had to do absolutely everything. Learn, just learn on the go. And I think there's a real value of, of being in the regions. Uh, the opportunities, I think, when you go to a smaller town are so much more. And it's really interesting you say that. So um, when I was in Perth, we, you know, I had this incredibly successful business. I had a set, multiple seven-figure business delivering uh, curriculum design services and training programs, mostly to the government and to um, the executive corporate organizations. So, you know, really, really big. I had 23 full-time trainers working for me, and it was all go, go, go all the time. So when we were, my husband came home from work and he was like, um, so we're moving to Brew in like six weeks I was kind of thinking right well what am I going to do up there you know I'm I'm so used to driving to the city and seeing all these big execs every single day you know that whole side of my business is going to be gone what am I going to do so I rocked up in Broome with a one-year-old and um, all of a sudden completely out of nowhere I got offered a job opportunity and became the youngest university director in Australian history. I would never have imagined in my life that working from my home office, which I was doing at the time, even with that size organization in Perth, um, that I would, you know, a few months later, literally end up becoming the youngest head of a university campus. Um, And that is, I believe, the opportunities that present themselves to you when you throw yourself out of your comfort zone, when you actually are just okay to expect the unexpected and to just leave yourself open to whatever opportunities may come along. You know, I just thought, well, what's the worst that can happen? At least I've got a nice beach to sit by if I'm unemployed. You know, I just kind of went, (laughs) whatever happens, happens. And I'm, I'm determined to be resourceful enough to do anything. 
And I've always said, yeah, I've traveled the world a lot. I've done a lot of things. I've made it and then lost everything a couple of times by making bad decisions as a leader in my business. And I've always said, I will never be above cleaning a toilet. I will never be above having to do anything it takes to keep the food in my tummy and a roof over my family's head, even if it means a borrowed roof at a friend's house on a couch. And I think when you go out with that attitude, there is, there's, there's no way you can ever fail because you, you're never going to look at yourself and go, I'm rubbish, I'm a failure. Just like, okay, next challenge. It's all good. I can get through this. And it's amazing what you learn, what you see and, and what things come to you that never would have if you didn't be like that. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely an upvote for just getting out of your comfort zone, trying new things and being okay with, like you said, just it, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Whatever happens, it's, it's going to be okay. I love that philosophy. So let's talk about online course creation because we've got a lot of listeners that are experts, they're facilitators, they run these amazing training sessions. A lot of their work is really exchanging their time for money. And the beauty of online courses is that, you know, when you're sleeping, you might be able to sell a few courses, wake up, wow, what a great feeling. How did you get your start? What was the first course that you ever produced? And um, how did that go? Oh, online courses. This was like one of my favorite topics in the world. So um, I, I started very, very traditionally. Um, I actually um, started off doing, I did my degree in education. I went on and did a postgraduate degree in adult education. As somebody, by the way, who absolutely hated school. I hated it with a passion. I could not wait to leave. I genuinely would count down the days the day I could walk out of school. I really, really had to. On my last day I walked out of school, I vowed that I would never walk into a class ever again and in fact the changing moment for me is because I ran off and went backpacking around the world going <laughs> to everything and everyone and it was my first stop was Fiji and I was sat down in this tiny little straw hut it had no walls on it whatsoever it was just the straw roof and the four stilts holding it up and there was this little girl and she must have been about 10 years old now I was flicking through a travel guide um, looking at right what, what island am I going to go and waste my life on tomorrow <laughs> And she came over to me and it was really clear that she was quite intrigued as to what I was reading. So I was open on a page at that point of her little tiny island, which genuinely took 15 minutes to walk across it from one side to the other. And I said to her with pigeon uh, body language, like, this, your island. So I'm pointing at the map, pointing at where we're standing, this, your island. And then I turned the page. I could tell she understood what, what it meant. And I said, this your island and this Fiji. And I pointed to the page of this whole map of Fiji. Now, for those who don't know, Fiji is actually over 300 islands. Now this girl, I could tell by the look in her eyes, clearly understood what I was saying, but also clearly had absolutely no idea that that many islands existed around her. It was absolutely evident that all she knew was a boat turned up every now and again and dropped off supplies. Never obviously given any consideration as to where it was coming from. Anyway, she then pointed at me as if to say, you, you know, where's your island? So I turned the page again, boom, the whole entire world. Pointed to her island, pointed to my island at the time was the UK and her chin dropped. And if her eyes would have spoken at that moment, it literally said, you just changed my life. And in my head, I thought, did I just show somebody the world? And I thought, I want to do that again. I want to show people things that they didn't even know existed. I want to show people new ways of seeing the world. I really want to gift people with the opportunities to discover things that they didn't know were there. Wow, is that is that education? I thought teaching was like memorizing the chemical, chemical equation of photosynthesis <laughs> or Pythagoras' theorem or something. I, I learned in that moment that education comes in many forms. And I, and I realized and felt and experienced the reward of gifting somebody new knowledge. And I thought, right, I'm going to learn. So that's when I, I came back from my travels and I, there was one place left and one university course in my local town. And it was a degree in education. I couldn't believe it. It was like destiny. Yeah. Um, and then went on, did my postgraduate degree and my first teaching placement, believe it or not, as a wise old 18 year old with blonde hair, um, was in an all male prison. <laughs> <laughs> Me or my old prison. That's um, proud. <laughs> my most amazing experience was playing stuck in the mud with a bunch of um, rather dangerous men. Um, but honestly, it was there where I kind of again learnt that education comes in many forms. It is not necessarily about sitting down in a class and, and writing down and answering tests. I learned there that education was about changing people's attitudes, changing people's feelings about themselves. Um, for me, when I was teaching in the prison, where you know a core curriculum is more secondary to um, realizing that we can be more, do more, have more in the world. And I was so amazed by how much somebody's life can be changed by simply allowing them to understand themselves. 
And that was it. I was hooked. I was hooked on showing people themselves, showing people, lifting up the lid as to the skills that are held within them that they didn't know was there. These dormant skills that have been bashed and battered by poor upbringings, by Mm. a sense of self-esteem that has just absolutely poofed into thin air. Um, And when people have set that self-efficacy and that belief that I can learn new things, I can achieve new things, the things that they can go on and do is absolutely mind-blowing. And so I started my education business at 19 years old um <laughs> a lot of people look at me in love and what, what are you going to go and teach people but I won um a, a large six-figure contract with our, our local council delivering a whole range of of topics everything from how to do gardening right the way through to self-esteem and confidence and it was it was incredible these different topics that we had I hired my university lecturer to run my business as a 19 year old amazing <laughs> this is such a cool origin story and he so he was running that because I then got offered a training management job by the prison education um, company. Uh, they had an outside the prison education band that was for those who were uh, long term unemployed, uh, long term welfare recipients. And they said, hey, you know, you've you've clearly demonstrated that you're adaptable enough to jump between all these different types of topics that we've been teaching. Um, and we, would you help us get people back into work by writing these new programs? Like, uh, it was just the perfect timing, um, right place, right time they just won this huge uh, national contract to write over 60 odd um, different training programs for welfare to work sector and they just went you're young and over ambitious you can have it score I was so happy um, and then the business just grew and grew and grew I had to hire more staff to go and work with my um, my university lecturer because the business was growing over there I kept I kept getting promoted in the job um, and then eventually I fell in love moved to the Mediterranean took the business there and that's where I really massively moved into the corporate space fast forward a few years fell in love um uh, fell in love with my husband who, who wanted to move to Australia and uh, that is when I uh, went really really big with all the mining companies and I've got some big big federal government contracts and in 2014 um, all of the federal budgets were suddenly cut completely unexpectedly mm-hmm. I was so miss cockadoodle do I was so pleased with myself I was must admit was taking things a little bit for granted and um, literally on one Tuesday morning I lost absolutely everything. So Tony Abbott turned around and said, uh, we're no longer funding X, Y, and Z different projects. So all of my clients went bust overnight. And in one single day, I lost $2.7 million and 23 employees. And I was devastated. Oh my goodness. Absolutely devastated. So there we were. I had staff all over Western Australia delivering training in remote Aboriginal communities. I couldn't even contact them. So I couldn't even tell them that when they came back, they didn't have a job. Um, So I had literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of redundancy payouts to pay out taxes that I wasn't going to be able to afford from the previous quarter because they literally stopped the funding dead there and then. So every bit of work we'd done for the previous quarter, we weren't going to get paid for. And it was a disaster with all this face-to-face training and trainers all over the place. So um, after feeling sorry for myself for a very, very long time, (laughs) a few weeks. Understandably, (laughs) understandably. I think that's okay. Weeks, yeah, a few weeks at the bottom of a bottle of wine, I have to admit. Um, I my my accountant said to me, like Sarah, no, no one can get out of this. This is ridiculous. I mean, this is this is too big to recover from. You're going to have to file for administration. And I looked at him and said, No. Uh, I got myself into this mess. I am the leader who put all of my eggs in one basket. It is my responsibility to get out of this mess too. And there's one thing I learned from it is that I did put all of my eggs in that one basket. I depended on a local economy in Western Australia. And when that local economy was just flicked, a little breeze knocked it by one person making a decision, everything was gone. And I wasn't the only training organization in that situation that time. There were RTOs literally shutting down around me. And I thought, well, my mistake is that I have depended on a local market. How can I keep doing what I'm doing on a not local market? okay, I'm good at this. I'm get asked these questions all the time. I'm being, I'm consulting all these big ASX listed companies and they ask me the same questions every single day. I drive to the city, I go to my next client and I answer the same questions again. So I thought, okay, then, well, I tell you what I'll do is I will just record the answers to those questions. So I stop repeating myself for once. So I did, I got, I got in front of my phone. I got a, I got a camera, I got a light and I just started, I brain 
brain dumped every single question I could think of that I had been asked more than once in the last 12 months. And I just recorded a video to answer that question. And I literally, in the following 12 months, I uh, increased my business by over 60%. I reduced my overheads absolutely dramatically. My profit margin went up so much. And I thought, wow, this is, this is online. And within just a couple of months, I had got thousands of students in countries all around the world. Normally, I would have had to have employed over 100 people, over 100 employees I would have had to have hired to have actually taught that many people face to face. I had done it on my own with no staff whilst recovering from the biggest financial kick in the nuts you could ever possibly imagine. And it happened because I went online. Okay. So a lot of us are listening to this and thinking, okay, Sarah, your story from 2014 is actually reminding me of my last three months. The fact that I've had these face-to-face -face gigs, all the work that I do is getting on a plane and getting into rooms. And now that's been swept away. I've realized now that my eggs are all in that one basket. How did you, how long did it take for you to build your audience? You said you had people from all over the world, thousands of people enrolled. What did you actually do? What were the steps? In, yeah, and it's really good because, and I'm really glad you've asked this question because a lot of people are see like when they look at somebody who's now got themselves to that position, mm. you know, I've got these thousands of students all around the world. I now am back up to having a seven figure education business, um, you know, recovered. <laughs> we'll not be making that <laughs> <laughs> I did it. No, the business did not go into administration. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, you know, you must have had all these special tricks and all this money or something. Now, I literally was facing bankruptcy, guys, and I was all by myself in the spare bedroom. Um, so what did I do? The first thing I said to myself was, well, look, I first of all have to make sure people know who I am, because if they can't see me and they can't hear me, well, they can't buy from me. Actually, you don't exist if people can't see you or hear you. So I knew that it was important to go online and create an online profile. I did not at that point have a Facebook business page. I had, I had my personal profile where I shared pictures of my cats from my family over in the UK and that is it. So I knew I had to get them. So I set up the LinkedIn profile. I set up my Facebook business page. I created a Facebook group. Um, and then I went and I just learned, 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 and learned. I mean, online marketing was something I'd never had to do before. You know, I, I was really great at knocking on the doors of ASA, you know, big companies and getting through the gatekeeper and presenting and doing all of that and writing the tenders and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'd never had to do this kind of online thing. So I went on to udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y for anyone uh, who's never heard of that. Loads of fantastic, really affordable training on there. Remember, I literally didn't have two pennies to rub together at the time. The tax man was on my back. <laughs> funny, right? So yeah, there's, there were courses on there for like $5. And honestly, they were life-changing. How to do email marketing, how to promote yourself online, how to do all these things that were completely and utterly new to me. So I devoured, devoured, devoured. Step one, learn, 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 learn. Step two is how how can I make sure that as many people as possible can see me, hear me and know what I do to help people? So I use this tip now of, of we have to be omnipresent and we have to um, be there all of the time. So we can do that really easily online without actually being online all the time. I love to use auto posting software like buffer.com, B-U-F-F-E-R for anyone who's never heard of it, to um, share as many tips as I possibly can. So while I was doing this thing of everyone needs to know who I am and what I do and how I help people, the number one way I knew that I would not succeed is if I was just going, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, come and buy from me. Here's an advert, here's an advert, buy, 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 buy. You know, that's the fastest way to the book button. Um, and so I thought, well, okay, then what, what will get people's attention, I know having walked in the offices of these people, when I was going in and doing these massive presentations to board members for very big contracts, the ones that I lost and didn't win the tenders for were the ones where I was talking about me and here's my company history and here's all the contracts we've done and here's all the work we've done and here's all the achievements that we have <laughs> next. The ones where I won the tender were the ones where I went, you know, this is what I believe could change your company. Here is a tip that I would recommend to you when I come and consult in your business. Here are 10 ways that um, I would discuss with you how we could transform this, 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 an area mm -hmm. of your business. And this is how they would work. And this is how they would be implemented. And these are the reasons why it would create these, these, and these results. I educated them. I was basically delivering them an educational presentation. So I got to demonstrate to these people that I knew what I knew, not promise them. I got to show them. I got them to literally experience that I was good at what I did. So I thought, oh, here I am going online. Well, I'll just, I'll duplicate that, but I'm just doing it on camera instead. And so again, I went back to those, those top questions that I was constantly being asked all the time, 
face to face and I answered them online. So I went, how can I help? How can I educate? How can I show people that I know what I know instead of telling them that I know what I know? So I started writing blogs and articles. I started doing loads of YouTube videos. I picked up my phone and did live streams. Was I scared? Hell yeah, I was terrified. <laughs> I also had no confidence left because it had all been beaten out of me for completely failing my business. But I thought that it's the only way I'm going to survive is if people know how, what I do and how I can help them. So blog, pass, blog posts, I started my little podcast. <laughs> I went out there and, and started uh, public speaking and recording those public presentations and putting those up online and sending them out to my audience. I gathered all of my blog posts together after a year. I put those together and I published a book on Amazon. It's not as hard as you think. Boom, I now had the audience on Amazon that I was exposed to. I started contacting other podcasters and asking if I could speak on their podcasts. I contacted online summits and said, hey, I'd love to come and talk about this particular thing. The number one thing I did in all of those instances using Buffer to distribute it constantly for me without me having to literally be there all the time was to then give away a free thing. So instead of trying to sell stuff, I was giving away yet more helpful stuff. That was, that was growing my email list slowly, but surely my list started to grow. I put my education programs, I created those online courses. I put them up on a learning management system. And once people were getting the free thing in the email list, I then very slowly nudged them over to getting the paid products and services. You deliver those well, you give people results, they tell people and the rest is history. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing like gold. And I'm an absolute admiration of how you actually picked yourself up and did this. It's incredible. It's funny about that email list as well. I remember when I was working in corporate about three years ago and I knew that I didn't want to work in corporate. I wanted to do my own thing. I was listening to a guy called Pat Flynn and he was talking about getting your first hundred subscribers. And I just thought there's no way I could get a hundred. And but as you said, it's, it's like a slow burn. And I love that you, I guess the point I really want to raise is it's like, what are you being asked already? That's a great tip for our listeners. If you're wanting to do more online course creation is, what are you being asked? Pay attention to it and then offer that in value in terms of the video and the free content that you push out. A Such lot of people say to me, you know, Sarah, like, cause I always go put out free content, put out free content, mm. put out free content. They're like, Sarah, but won't it cannibalize my business? You know, if like I'm giving away all this free stuff, am I not like, what are they going to buy from me? And I really love to use like the celebrity chef analogy here and I like, go with me because honestly guys giving away free stuff is exactly what's made me a millionaire. So please, mm. Take this with a pinch of salt and go with the flow here. Um, I always say it, we all, we all know bunches of celebrity chefs out there, you know, like Jamie Oliver and Gordon Ramsay and Nigella, whatever her name is. Um, Thora Nigella, I've forgotten your surname right now. Anyway. Um, <laughs> What, so what do they do constantly? How do we know them? Well, we know them because we turn on our television and we watch them for free, literally demonstrate and share with you their best kept recipes. Yeah, mm. They literally, this is exactly what goes in it, exactly how much of what goes in it. This is how you mix it. This is how you cut it. This is how you eat it. Oh, how delicious, right? They literally show you the entire secret recipe. Yet hands up who still has a $30 cookbook going moldy with moths on it on the microwave shelf. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yep. Of course we do. Yeah. Like we, despite the fact that on YouTube, the recipe is free on their blog. It's free on all of the major supermarket sh um, websites. That recipe is free, but we all still go out and pay $30 for the cookbook, right? So something's working here. Now, how did they even get on the television in the first place? Well, it's because they went on YouTube and started sharing their recipes and their cooking tips and people liked them. So then they got offered a TV gig, which then said, do you want to write a book? Then guess what? Now they've got restaurants. And some of us who are lucky enough to live near cities, not me, <laughs> that's a three hour flight away. But yeah. for those of you who are good, lucky enough to live near cities, I mean, I bet you have still, some of you listening, have gone and paid $250, $300 for a dinner at one of their restaurants. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly how it works. Though the only reason those celebrities even have a restaurant or books or television contracts or really, really ridiculously overpriced cooking academies is because they gave stuff away for free, which is what captured our hearts and made us fall in love with them. This is exactly how it applies to you guys as educators, experts, leaders, thought leaders, course creators. It works in exactly the same way. Yeah. Please do not discredit how powerful giving away free stuff is. It is exactly what will make you rich. Thank you so much. Because I, I often hear people, yeah, really scared of their IP and protecting it. And I also get listeners reaching out and going, oh, aren't you scared? You give away all these ideas every week. Aren't you scared that people will take them? It's like, well, first of all, no, no, I think it's great because that's my 
I mean, my whole mission is to make workshops more engaging and effective, but also I think it challenges us as well. So Sarah, if you're giving away free content, then you're like, okay, what's the next idea? Like you've actually got to reimagine and rethink and get new ideas because what you've already given out is old. Now, how can we keep improving? I find it like a personal challenge. It's like, okay, that's an old idea now. What can I do next? Yeah, it's, it really is true. And you know, I actually have my big authority flagship program. It's been my, one of my core income earners now for the past four or five years. Um, it's called how to create profitable mm -hmm. online courses. Now I normally sell that for 500 bucks with COVID that everything went on. I actually didn't think this through fantastically, but I'm like, mm -hmm. do you know what my, this is my, this is my way. It's who I am. It's what I do. It's what I constantly sing about and tell people they should do. So like, do you know what? I'm going to really show and prove the point here that, that we need to do this. And I saw people all around me literally losing their whole entire business. A lot of my friends are professional speakers, corporate presenters, and they just had an entire year's worth of work just ripped out from under them with no notice at all because of covid and there was one night i was talking to like the third friend who was just in tears on the phone to me and it, i just sat there and cried and went well what am i going to do what can i what can i do what can little old me do in the battle against covid i mean who am i sitting in my spare room in the middle of absolutely whoop whoop nowhere in australia and i thought would well, you know what there's one thing i can do and I can give my knowledge away for free to help people at this time. Mm. So I decided to give away my number one income earning online course completely free of charge at the beginning of COVID. And I actually have just done my end of June report now. And in the COVID period, I have given away to date $1.15 million <gasps> worth of places on that program. Amazing. And it is, I, I'm still quite blown away because I literally only did the analysis this morning. Um, and it, I, I have no idea what this might go on to do to my business. I really don't. But I just kind of thought it's, it's one way that I can help. It's one way that I can serve. Now, what I can also tell you is that my email list has grown by thousands of percent. I can tell you that my following, my, e my Facebook group, has grown by thousands of percent. Um, my name being tagged in groups where our people are asking questions about my topic has just like my notifications are ping, 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 ping. So what I can say is that I've had lots of people saying thank you. But lots of people saying you've genuinely changed my life and helped me get out of a hole that I never thought I'd be able to get out with. I mean, if that isn't, if that isn't worthy of us as leaders doing something like that for people, I don't know what is. But in terms of my business, well, who knows what next, but I think I've got signs already that I've won the hearts of people. Um, and I didn't intend to do that. That was just me crying after having one too many wines with my friends who were absolutely <laughs> in a disaster. Um, yeah. But it, it just goes to show that um, we should never be afraid. We should never be afraid of giving because we are educators and leaders because we know we can make a difference to somebody. And first and foremost, we do what we do because we care about people's lives. And the only way we can really, really leave a legacy behind us that lives on way beyond our own existences is if we just give and it, I really really would love to see more people just not worrying about what that might do for them me too and the, the funny thing about giving is it's you kind of feel like maybe it's altruistic but we get so much in return as a result I mean you with your goosebumps from that from getting that figure today and I, I can sense how you're feeling and how this is like I mean this is the thing it's it's not like we do it because with great intentions but we also win as a result it just i love i love that story thank you so much for sharing we're, we're going to close very soon but i can't leave this conversation with asking you how are you doing all of the things you've got these amazon books it's online courses you're everywhere you also are a mother as well um how are you doing all of the things i just <laughs> like how do i be more sarah like it's unbelievable <laughs> Like what? Well, thank you. It is, it is a little bit of illusion. I do get asked this question a lot. It's yeah. amazing, actually. We all know that online is, um, it has its very, you know, it has these mirrors and smokes and walls. Now, I'm never inauthentic about what I do. In fact, I probably overshare a bit too much. But um, <laughs> there's nothing that doesn't get shared in my world. But um, look, it's actually quite easy to be very, very productive when you have systems in place. Now, I may come across as a little bit of a woo kind of woman, but I am extremely systematic. And uh, I owe a huge amount of my productivity and my success to the fact that I've created instructions, processes, step-by-step -step procedures for everything that I do, even if I'm the only one that does them. And there's a number of reasons why, because when you actually write down what you do, you very quickly see the inefficiencies. But I have become a very, very big fan of repurposing. 
repurposing is powerful. Now, sometimes we think, oh, I've written a blog post, I've shared it once. Well, oh, now I need to create a new blog post. Well, look, guys, think of your newsfeed. It only takes an hour for everything to go disappear. It's gone. <laughs> when, no, but nobody's going to go looking for your blog post. I'm really sorry they're not. However, if it's in front of them and they read it, it could change their lives. So keep putting it in front of them. People do not repurpose, recycle, reuse, republish their work enough. So what I like to do to make the most of this, be everywhere all of the time, is to repurpose. So I take my videos. Let's pretend you've created 10 videos, 10 tips, the top 10 questions your audience asks in your field of expertise all the time. Grab those 10 questions, do one video for each question, make each video fairly short, two to, two to nine minutes roughly. It's kind of um, as much as we can watch before life distracts us and so take one of those videos let's say you've done one question um, on one simple thing people ask well I simply take that video I upload it to YouTube or normally I do a live stream first because that's going to give you loads and loads of reach Facebook always rewards live streamers with reach so I do the live stream to answer the question you can download your live stream as an mp4 and I upload that mp4 to YouTube now what I do is I connect my YouTube to a really cool tool called rev.com rev which transcribes my video for me I take the transcription I edit it a bit boom, now it's a blog post. So I upload that to my blog and I share that on Buffer. Now I take the YouTube video that's uploaded to YouTube and I now share that all over social media. I take the blog post that I've created and I then copy and paste it as an article published on LinkedIn because it's you can have natively published articles. Boom, that's a whole other search engine and a whole other audience that that's now going to be put in front of. I take that blog post again. I go onto Google and I type in my uh, target audience and in square brackets, write for us. And it brings up all of the magazines that accept guest writing articles. I've now over time created a massive Excel sheet with all of those. And I just send them all an email saying, hey, here's an article. If you'd like to publish it, no charges. Just make sure you link back to my website. Most of them do. So I get published every single month in other people's magazines. So I'm stealing other people's audiences in a way that they're thanking me for it. All the time. <laughs> now I take that blog article that's now gone in all of those different places. I grab a highlighter pen and I highlight some like nice little text lines or nice little tips or one liner sentences. Take those sentences, chuck them in my buffer so that they go out as little text posts. I take those little tips again. I go into canva.com and I create little tip image cards. So mine, I teach people how to create online courses. So mine would say online course creation tip. Then there's a the little tip that I pulled out of my blog in the middle. And then there's my web URL on the bottom. I now load all of those little tip image cards up into my buffer. Boom. They now go out absolutely everywhere. I go back to the video I created. Remember, all this is still from that yeah, one yeah. video. I then save the MP3, the audio only, and I upload it to my podcast. It's so easy to press upload and it distributes all over my podcast. So now I have an audio file. Some people just prefer audio. Great. Guess what? Make sure that shares absolutely everywhere. I now go out and contact podcasters and say, hey, you've got an audience of people that I believe would love to learn how to create online courses. Here are three things I'd love to teach and I have a free gift to give them at the end. P.S. I can make you an affiliate of my paid programs too. Well, guess what? My diary is packed with me presenting on other people's podcasts all the time. Um, so that gets me in front of new people. Summits the same again. I search for summits and I, I have one presentation that I just slightly tweak, but pretty much stays the same all the time. And I go and present there. Now that alone from one video right there is about three months worth of content that can just pump out and pump out over and over again. By the time three months has come, hopefully you've done two, three, four <laughs> or five videos. Now guys, I have a virtual assistant who I pay $5 now. She's been with me for seven years who literally does all of that for me. So I did it myself time and time and time again until I got the process exact. I wrote the instructions down by the letter after I'd done it at least a hundred times to make sure this is the exact system to use. So all I have to worry about is the expert. All you have to worry about is the expert is producing the video. It's your voice. It's oh your face. Gosh. It's your authenticity. It's your message. The way you speak, no one else can be you or replicate you in any way whatsoever. That's why there's no such thing as competition. You focus on creating the videos and answering the questions, find yourself a virtual assistant on upwork.com and give them that process to then follow. Doof. I have at least 300 posts loaded in buffer all the time. What do I do? I work from 9 a.m. to midday because I have two little children and that is all I do. And you can do. <laughs> you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for getting into the detail of that process because I think we hear all the time, oh, it's important to repurpose, but you've actually just outlined all the steps and how 
one, two or three minute video can be repurposed for months. That's absolutely incredible. And just talking of repurposing, I, I feel like that's the snippet we're going to, uh, you will see that on LinkedIn. We'll see that on Facebook. We'll definitely cut that out and people will be extremely inspired by that. Uh, Sarah, you're absolutely incredible. Love um, being part of your Facebook group as well and getting tips on how to create online courses. If our listeners want to create their own online course or write a, an Amazon book, where should we send them? Absolutely. Look, um, I, at the moment, at the time of recording, this, still have that paid online course available completely free of charge. And I would love to give that to the listeners here today. If you go to sarahcord.com forward slash freedom, you will be able to access that $500 course completely free of charge. It will take you through the entire process of creating your online course, doing all the tech, making sure you have a course that will sell market demand right the way through to launch and marketing as well. I really look forward to sharing that with you. Wow. It's been amazing to connect with you, Sarah, and all the best with your move to Kununurra as well. Look forward to seeing some amazing sunset photos too. It's been great chatting. (laughs) Thank you, Leanne. Thank you.